This is what the UFC women's bantamweight rankings looked like in February 2013. This is right after Ronda Rousey and Liz Carmouche fought in the first ever women's fight in UFC history. So we begin a new women are now in the UFC and this is basically the starting point of the women's bantamweight division in the UFC. So we get to see it from its real starting point until present day. So yeah, this is the actual complete history of the women's bantamweight division in the UFC. So let's go on this fun ride to see how we got to today because a lot has changed as you can see by what the rankings look like. So let's jump into it. Kat Zingano got a TKO win over Misha Tate, bumping her up to the number one contendership position. Sarah McMahon then TKO'd Sheila Gaff, bumping McMahon up two spots to the number four position. Alexis Davis then got a decision win over Rossi Sexton. And then Liz Carmouche TKO'd Jessica Andrade. Amanda Nunes got a TKO win over Sheila Gaff, bumping Gaff down one spot to number 10. After the loss, Gaff was released by the UFC, allowing Rossi Sexton to make her rankings debut. Jermaine Durandamy then got a decision win over Julie Kedzi, which made them swap spots in the rankings. Jessica I then got a decision win over Sarah Kaufman. It was a big upset win, so I bumped all the way up to number seven. Then Jessica Andrade got a decision win over Rossi Sexton and made her UFC rankings debut. Amanda Nunes then TKO Jermaine Durandamy dropping Durandamy down one spot to number 10. Alexis Davis got a decision win over Liz Carmouche, dropping Carmouche down three spots, and Alexis Davis up three spots. Ronda Rousey then submitted her arch rival, Misha Tate. That didn't change anything in the rankings. And this is what the UFC Women's Bantamweight rankings looked like at the end of 2013. Let's be honest, not a whole lot happened. We did have Jessica I make her rankings debut, bumping all the way up to number six. We did have Kat Zingano becoming the number one contender, Sarah McMahon and Alexis Davis bumped themselves up, but nothing too dramatic. Let's see how the division shapes up in 2014. Maybe we'll get something exciting. A random shuffle drops Jermaine Durandamy from the rankings and Juliana Pena makes her rankings debut. And then Alexis Davis bumps up one spot to number two after defeating Jessica I. Ronda Rousey TKO'd Sarah McMahon, but nothing changed. Same with Andrade versus Pennington, nothing changed. Kaufman defeated Leslie Smith, nothing changed. Misha Tate got a decision win over Liz Carmouche, nothing changed. But then Bechko Hea breaks that streak, she enters the rankings at number 10. Then Ronda Rousey KO'd Alexis Davis, dropping Davis down to number three. And then Zara McMahon got a decision win over Lauren Murphy, bumping McMahon up to the number three spot. Betch Gohea then got a TKO win over Shayna Baszler, bringing her up to the number nine spot. Jessica Andrade then gets a submission win over Larissa Petchko. Misha Tate then got a decision win over Rin Nakai. And Kat Zingano got a thrilling TKO win over Amanda Nunes, which surprisingly dropped Nunes down one spot. It was a really good fight though. Jessica I TKO'd Leslie Smith, but nothing changed. And this is what the UFC women's bantamweight rankings looked like at the end of 2014. As I said a million times there, nothing changed, nothing changed. And if you look at the rankings, really nothing changed. The most exciting thing that happened in the division was the introduction of Betch Cohea, which is exciting. Cool. Now you might be thinking, wow, the women's bantamweight rankings, this is a boring video, they don't have much to offer. Hold your horses, because 2015 and 2016 for the women's bantamweight rankings, phew, this is when stuff gets crazy. So thank you for continuing on with the video because this is where it gets good. So let's get into it. Right off the bat, Misha Tate got a decision win over Sarah McMahon, dropping McMahon down to the number four spot. And then a random shuffle put Betch Cohea up to the number seven spot and Liz Carmouche down one spot. And then Marion Renault got a submission win over Jessica Andrade, giving Renault her rankings debut. Ronda Rousey then pulled off a spectacular submission over the number one contender Kat Zingano. Holly Holm got a decision win over Raquel Pennington, bumping Holm up to the number 10 position at bantamweight. Amanda Nunes got a TKO win over Shayna Baszler, bumping her up one spot to number eight. Liz Carmouche got a decision win over Lauren Murphy, but nothing changed. 
Alexis Davis then submitted Sarah Kaufman, bumping Kaufman down one spot to number six. Then Holly Holm got a decision win over Marion Renault, bumping her up one spot to number nine. Misha Tate then got a decision win over Jessica I, dropping I two spots and somehow bumping Betch Kohea up to number five. But that didn't last long as Ronda Rousey KO'd Betch Kohea, dropping her three spots all the way down to number eight. Mandy Nunez then got a submission win over Sarah McMahon, bumping Nunez all the way up to the number four spot. Then a random shuffle put Holly Holm ahead of Betch Kohea. I think it was because Holly Holm was scheduled to fight Ronda Rousey next. And then Juliana Pena got a decision win over Jessica I. Juliana Pena bumping up five spots to number seven. And then we have a new one. Alexis Davis got pregnant. Congratulations, Davis. So she had to spend time away from the UFC. She left the rankings. And then Holly Holm knocked out Ronda Rousey. Holly Holm bumping up to the championship position and dropping Ronda Rousey to number one. And then Valentina Shevchenko got a decision win over Sarah Kaufman bumping Kaufman all the way down to number nine. And this is what the UFC women's bantamweight rankings looked like at the end of 2015. When I said that this year would be exciting, I was not kidding. Wow. I mean, just look at the top five. Holly Holm, Amanda Nunes, Juliana Pena. That's a completely different looking top five than the year previous. And the biggest shocker of all, Holly Holm knocks out Ronda Rousey to become the champion. Ronda Rousey undefeated, just running through her competition. And then Holly Holm just really out of nowhere. What was she, the number eight, number seventh ranked fighter in the division? Knocks out Ronda Rousey. Now this causes chaos in the division. So let's see how that chaos plays out, because it's fun. Now before we move on, this is the part of the video where I ask very kindly if you could like this video. I waited until we had a, a year of full of chaos because that was entertaining and we've got a lot of more fun coming along. But if you could just pause right now, scroll down, like the video and subscribe to MMA Nation, that would mean a lot. All right, now let's go into another crazy year. Right off the bat, Sarah Kaufman left the UFC giving Shevchenko her top 10 debut. And then Amanda Nunez got a decision win over Shevchenko. Misha Tate then submitted Holly Holm. Misha Tate is now your women's bantamweight champion. And then Raquel Pennington got a decision win over Betch Kohea, and Pennington made her top 10 debut. And Sarah McMahon got a decision win over Jessica I, bumping I all the way down to the number 10 spot. And then Juliana Pena got a decision win over Kat Zingano, Zingano all the way down to number 5, and Pena top 3. Manny Nunez then submitted Misha Tate. Nunez is now champion. Wow, that is three different champions in one year. And then Valentina Shevchenko gets a decision win over the old champion Holly Holm. She's now all the way up to number three. And then Raquel Pennington gets a decision win and bumps up to number eight. Not a major change, but noteworthy. Betch Kohea gets a decision win over Jessica I, dropping I from the rankings. And look who's back. Carmouche then gets a decision win over Kuchigan. And then Raquel Pennington gets a decision win over Misha Tate, the former champion, dropping Tate all the way down to number 10 and Pennington into the top five. And then Sarah McMahon submits Alexis Davis. And then Misha Tate retires, giving Jermaine Duran to me a top 10 spot. And then Amanda Nunes TKOs Ronda Rousey to finish off the year. Ronda Rousey now down to number four. And this is what the UFC women's bantamweight rankings look like at the end of 2016. I think that has to be the craziest year and craziest division out of anything. I don't even know what matches that. Maybe the middleweight rankings from the past year, but three different champions in the women's bantamweight division. Raquel Pennington making her top five debut, Misha Tate retiring after dropping a bunch of rankings, Juliana Pena all the way up to number two, Valentina Shevchenko pretty much out of nowhere all the way up to the number one contendership position, and Amanda Nunes becoming the UFC women's bantamweight champion. So let's see if they can continue that momentum going into 2017. Valentina Shevchenko gets a submission win over Juliana Pena to start the year, dropping Pena down to number four. Jermaine Durandamy then gets a decision win over Holly Holm at featherweight. 
That drops Holly Holm at bantamweight to number 5. And then Sarah McMahon gets a submission win over Gina Mazzani, bringing her up one spot. Betch Cohea fought to a draw with Marion Renault. A random shuffle dropped Rousey down one spot, and Pena up to number 2. Alexis Davis then got a decision win over Cindy DeDoyce and making her way back to the UFC rankings. Holly Holm then KO'd Betch Cohea, which I guess is enough to bring you all the way up to the number two spot. And then for, for some reason, maybe because Holly Holm won, uh, Jermaine Durand me was pushed up two spots. Ketlin Vieira got a submission win over Sarah McMahon, bumping Vieira up to the number nine spot. Amanda Nunes then defended her title of defeating Valentina Shevchenko. And then a random shuffle put Raquel Pennington ahead of Ronda Rousey. And then Liz Carmouche dropped to the flyweight division after its inception. And then Cyborg vs. Holly Holm was announced and for some reason that dropped Ronda Rousey down for Jermaine Durand and me got to number 5 this... What is going on? And this is what the UFC Women's Bantamweight rankings look like at the end of 2017. I, I don't know what happened there. That was really weird. The rankings just for some reason. I, I tried looking it up. What happened? Why did Jermaine Durand and me bump up to number five? The only thing that I could find was that Cyborg versus Home was announced. Really weird ranking shuffles that make little to no sense. I mean, you saw that throughout 2017 where it was like random shuffle, random shuffle. And it's like, what? And then at the end there, just a whole bunch of random shuffles that put Vieira up to number seven. I mean, that makes sense, but because she beat McMahon, but like Rousey down to number nine suddenly and Durandamy up to number five. I get that she beat Holly Holm at featherweight, but then why did Holly Holm move up three spots to number two after defeating Betch Cohea, which let's be honest, isn't a huge feat in the bantamweight division. Just a really odd year. And that continues in 2018, so let's let's just go into 2018. A random shuffle, yes, a random shuffle, puts Vieira up to number six. God. And then Valentina Shevchenko, to add to the chaos, moves to flyweight, bumping pretty much everybody up one spot, and Leslie Smith makes her rankings debut. Marion Renault then gets a submission win over Sarah McMahon, bumping Renault up to the number seven position. And then Ronda Rousey goes to the WWE. Yes, that actually affected the rankings. On Raw, she signed the contract, and the next week she dropped to number 11. And then Vieira got a decision win over Kat Zingano, bumping her up to the number four spot. And then this is, this is weird, okay? So Aspen Ladd misses weight. Leslie Smith refuses to fight her. Leslie Smith is released by the UFC. Aspen Ladd, for not fighting, gets bumped up to number nine. What is going on? Amanda Nunes TKOs Raquel Pennington in a title fight. Pennington drops two spots to number four and Vieira all the way up to number two. Holly Holm then gets a featherweight win over Megan Anderson and nothing happens. Kat Zingano gets a decision win over Marion Renault. Nothing changes. And that's how, that's where we are in the women's bantamweight rankings. I told you that 2018 was maybe even weirder than 2017. We had Ronda Rousey just completely leaving the division to go off to the WWE. We had Leslie Smith being removed from the UFC for not agreeing to fight after Aspen Ladd missed weight, but that puts Ladd up to number nine and then just some really confusing decisions from the people making the rankings. And that's something that I really have never talked about in these videos is there are questionable decision-making moments by the people who do the rankings. And it's happened in previous ranking videos. Mine are ones where I'm like, I'm not gonna focus on that. These are kind of a good representation of what's going on in the UFC. But the women's bantamweight division, it, it just bucks that trend. It is a wild division where a lot of times what's happening outside of the division is what affects the rankings and it's just wild it is wild but that kind of makes sense because it's really the, the the beginning of the division in the ufc the women's bantamweight division is only five years old within the ufc and you're gonna get some chaos and this video these rankings were just so full of chaos which is entertaining but a part of me is a little frustrated at what's going on recently. 
let's see some more fights that impact divisions. Anyways, that is the end of this video. The women's bantamweight division was a fun one to do. A lot of chaos. I had fun doing it, and I hope you had fun watching. Make sure to like the video if you did like it, and suggest which division you want to see next. I know I'm going to do men's bantamweight next, but just in case maybe there's a division that I'm not thinking about, go ahead and comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please watch the other rankings videos that will be highlighted somewhere on the screen. And yeah, again, thank you so much for watching.